Friday, everybody. Dude, I'm telling you, I don't know if it's like the face wash I use or my wife's trying to poison me, but every morning my eyes are red. What's up with that, Matt? I think my wife's slipping something in my coffee, slipping me a roofie. I don't know what's up with that every morning. He's like this real abrasive face wash. Maybe that's what it is. What's up, Matt? Good morning. Hope everybody's doing good. We got a bunch of people in here already. Good morning, Tom. Stinking weather today. It's raining. I was going to go to the beach. I was going to take my wife to Ocean City for a couple days with her family for Mother's Day. Even though there's not much to do, uh, would have been nice to not have much to do at the beach versus not have much to do at home, but it's supposed to be rainy all day today, overcast and like 45 or 50 tomorrow down at the beach. So we pulled the plug on the Mother's Day beach trip. Hopefully we'll be able to make up for it soon. Ty Backer, what's up? I wanted to talk uh, this morning and, and share something with you that I, 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 I'm challenged with all the time, um, but I've gotten better at it, and, and I think there's one one simple solution to it um, that I'll get out right in, right in the, the, the beginning here, and it's um, surround yourself with, with people that don't complement your strengths necessarily. Um, you need to surround yourself with people that are good at things that you're not. What's up, Ty? Good to see you, buddy. Canceled lunch on me yesterday. Let me know if you're around today. Um, if you have some time, uh, farmer's market's open. There's always some good food over there. Um, but the first thing that you can do if you feel like you're stretched too thin or you're trying to do too many things at once, and listen, this applies in a lot of different scenarios. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a real thing. And the caption of the beginning here that I put was minimum effective dose. And it's part of something I learned from a good friend of mine um, that's part of a, a mastermind group that I'm in. And the lesson that she talked about was to do things in small doses and be great at them. And it goes hand in hand with stretching ourselves too thin or trying to do too many things at one time. And what happens is it dilutes our attitude, which dilutes our results. And then ultimately, things that we would otherwise be great at we end up being not so good, and then things that we may be average or decent at, we end up being terrible. So what you should think about is, is you know, the things that you're really, really good at. And when you're doing those things, that you absolutely love them. And then when you find yourself doing something that you don't necessarily enjoy, and I got news for you, if, if, if you're doing something that you don't enjoy and you think you're great at it, the chances are you're not because you're just not into it. So here's here's how that looks for me. Like, you know, at, at, at two or three years ago in our business, I would try and literally do everything or have a hand in everything or be part of every decision. So I was involved in um, financial decisions. I was involved in um, acquisitions decisions. I was involved in renovation uh, budget decisions. I was involved in the selection of vanities. I was involved in the selection of paint color, carpet, laminate floors, wood floors, countertops, backsplashes, appliances. And what happened was, is throughout the course of the day, if I was involved in 15 things, five of them I wasn't great at and I didn't enjoy, and I sucked at it. I mean, at the end of the day, I sucked at it compared to somebody that really enjoys doing that stuff and happened to be much better than I did. And then the things that I was really good at, and I think the, what, what I've learned about myself is what I'm, what I'm great. I'll say great. I think I'm great at connecting with our people. I really love sitting down and having a conversation with the people that work with me and finding out how their day's going, um, you know, any challenges they may have professionally. If I can coach them through a situation or, or help them with my experience about a, how to handle a difficult customer situation, uh, those are the things that I thoroughly enjoy and I love and I happen to believe that I'm great at it. I think that I, I, I have a knack for sales. 
Uh, I've always been successful in sales positions. I've experienced uh, some, some tremendous results, whether it was the car business, I was in the mortgage business for a little bit, uh, real estate now. So I try and keep myself in sales and, and coaching and teaching opportunities. Those are the places where I find I am, I, I am just fulfilled, I love it, and I believe that I'm great at it, so I see myself getting great results. So here's what happens is, if I were to not force myself to focus on those two areas and allowed myself to get pulled into different areas of my life or different areas of my business, I would become less great at the things that I should be great at. So how do you do that? Well, what I had to do was I had to empower people to do the things that I'm not great at. And I can show you guys a chart. If you can imagine a, 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 a page uh, with four squares on it. In the top left corner, it's love and great. That's the top left corner of the page. Those are the things that you love to do and you're great at it. Then there's good and like on the top right. Then there's not good and 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 and, and don't like, and then there's um, terrible and 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 dislike. You know, hate. Uh, it's pretty strong terminology, but if you think about it that way, and if you look at those things, and you if you if you start writing down on a piece of paper things and putting them in those boxes, it makes it easy for you to decide where you should spend your time. So for me, I wrote down all of the things that I found myself doing throughout the day that were not on the top top part of the page. If I, if I, if I didn't at least like them and, and was good at it, I needed to write it down and figure out a way to eliminate it. Then I specifically looked at those things and said, okay, who in our business um, or in our company currently would be great at handling those tasks? Um, or, you know, oftentimes what I found is we needed to add someone um, to do those things. And then I got even better at sales. I got even better at connecting with people. I got even better at coaching because I had time to do it. And then also I found that my attitude was just different. And what I mean by attitude is if we find ourselves doing things that we're not good at and we find ourselves doing things that we don't like, when we get to the things that we love, that we're great at, our attitude can blow that whole thing up. And if you ever want an example, think about like if you've ever had a phone call or a situation um, let's use, okay, so I'm driving to work this morning. I'm super pumped up. I can't wait to get to work. We've had a super productive week. Uh, we hired uh, two people, about to hire two more. Um, it's a super exciting time in our business. We had a town hall meeting. Um, almost half of our staff was back in the office. We had a catered lunch. Like It's just been a great week. I'm super excited. But if I'm driving along here and someone cuts me off in traffic and gives me the middle finger, when I get to my appointment that I'm going at here at 10 o'clock, my attitude can be completely changed. I'd walk into that appointment or I'd walk into that meeting that I was excited about and that, you know, I, I would be, you know, well-equipped and great to be able to, to kill it. And because my attitude has been impacted, you would walk into something that you were looking forward to or get somewhere that you were looking forward to, and all of a sudden your attitude's impacted in the first half or sometimes the entire experience has now been ruined. So, you know, it, it, I think most of us are, are probably that are watching this that are friends with me are old enough to understand how big of an impact our attitude can, can have on us. And that's the reason why I'm trying to share with you the impact of this philosophy of minimum effective dose. Because the reality is, is even if we do things that we're good at or we're great at, and we do them for an extended period of time, we run the risk of having burnout. So what you want to figure out is what's the minimum amount of time that you can spend doing any one thing to get the right amount of impact. Because, you know, you can work out for two hours a day, and have extraordinary results. If you work out for six hours a day, there's a there's a, a, a point of diminishing return to where it no longer becomes uh, productive, right? So our time and the way that we budget our time, whether it's our personal time or our personal life or uh, the way that we spend our time at work is the same way. There's a, there's, a, there, there's a diminishing return once we get beyond the minimum effective dose. Look it up. There's a, there's a real terminology. There's, there's plenty of lessons. There's books out there that are written that involve this, this philosophy of minimum effective dose. But if you, if you start that, that process, um, you know, what, what, what 
it looks like in the very beginning is starting to eliminate the things that you do that you don't enjoy, that you're not very good at, and then doubling down on the things that you're good, good at and becoming great. And then your ceiling and the, and the, 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 you become then, um, you know, a, a multiplier, not someone that does addition, right? So if, if you spend two additional hours a day doing something you love and you're great at, you'll get a 10 X return. If you spend two hours of time doing something that you're not great at or not good at, maybe you're terrible at it and you don't enjoy it. It's actually going to subtract from you. You might get a little bit of work done. You may be able to measure some type of, of, of progress or you may be able to look at something and see that it got across the finish line. But now your attitude's been impacted. That time that you could have spent doing something else may have got you 10 times the results that you got doing the, the two hours or 20 minutes or half a day's worth of work on something that you suck at. So think about that. Spend more time, draw a line down the page, draw a line through the center of the page, put things that you love and you're great, things that you, you're, you're good um, and you like, put things that you dislike and you're good, and then put things that you dislike and you stink at into four separate portions of the page and start writing down the things that you do each day and which block they belong in. And then when you map out your day or you map out your week, only try and focus on the things that are in the top left right? If you have to, and you move over to the things that are the top right, that would be the section of things that you're good at and you enjoy, but you're not great in love. That's okay. And stay away from the things that are in the bottom half of the page. Stop trying to get better at things that you suck at. And that's, listen, that's not, you know, if you suck at um, being a jerk right now, it wouldn't apply. I'm talking about, uh, you know, pr predominantly business. Um, you know, because we, we spend, you know, eight, 10 hours of our day, most times at work. So we want to make sure we get the most out of the things that we do while we're at work. Make sure that we get the most out of the, the relationships that we build with the people that we work with. Make sure that you only get one life as far as I know. Some of you might agree. But at the end of the day, you get one week, you get 40 hours or 50 hours or one month. You might as well get the most out of that. And this is an effective way to get the most Stop stretching yourself too thin, trying to do 15 things at once. Become a specialist. Work in the areas where you are great and you love it. And then double down on that and eliminate, either delegate or delete. That's the, the, the way to, to, to um, thin your schedule. Delegate or delete the things that you're doing that are on the top half of that page. If you don't like it and, and, and you're good at it or you don't love it and you're great at it, stop doing it. Find someone else to do it for you. Delegate it. Don't do it at all. And if you think about it, there's things that you're doing right now that if you just didn't do, but you, you took that time and you doubled down on the things that you're great at it, I think you would find that the results that you get from doubling down and doing the things you're great at will far outweigh not even addressing or spending any time doing some of the stuff that you're doing now. You're wasting your time. Have a good Friday, everybody. See you.